I like to think I do all right in friendship turns. I've got a few numbers on my address book. I sometimes get invited to parties and I have a few hundred followers on Twitter, which is not bad for a socially awkward mathematician. But I had a bit of a shock the other day when I started looking at my social network in a little bit more detail, because it turns out that the people who I follow are actually far more popular than I am, with an average of 300,000 followers compared to my now quite pathetic 800. But I got even bigger shock when I started looking at the people who follow me, because even they have a number that massively dwarfs my own, making me look massively unpopular. So I guess I have to accept the inevitable. My friends are just more popular than me. But maybe there's something a bit weird going on here, because it actually turns out that for the vast majority of tweeters, both the people they follow and the people that follow them have more followers than they do. For almost all of us, our friends are more popular than we are. But hang on, maths, what have you been drinking? This doesn't make any sense at all. It all starts to become clear when you look at a simplified version of a group of friends. So let's imagine James May is uh, great chums with Bertie Einstein, good pals with uh, Charles Darwin and best buds with Brian Cox. Darwin, Einstein and Brian Cox, however, don't know each other, probably because of their intense scientific rivalry. Now, with James having three friends and each of the others having only one each, the average number of friends in this network is one and a half. But that means that each of the scientists have a below average number of friends. Now you might think that's perfectly normal, scientists having below average number of friends. But it does show us that it's possible for the vast majority of the people in a network to only be friends with people who are more popular than they are. Now this is true for 98% of the 500 million Twitter users and 98% of the 1 billion Facebook users. Because actually as it turns out, the way that we form friendships on Facebook, on Twitter and in real life follows a very distinctive pattern, creating networks that look like this. So all those celebrities who don't follow you back, they sit at the middle of these networks in what we call the hubs, the people with the most connections. And they're skewing the networks or the averages for everybody else who's in their network. There might only be one Lady Gaga, but there are 40 million people whose network averages are messed up just because they follow her. So this is all kind of nice, but what will really blow your mind is when I tell you that we can use this idea to stop the spread of contagious diseases. So imagine you wanted to stop the spread of a, of a virus, but that vaccinating everybody or giving everybody education about hygiene was just far too expensive and would take way too much time. Ideally, what you'd like to do is just to target the hubs, the people with the most connections, and vaccinate them. But without asking every one of you how many friends you have, we have no idea which one of you is the hub. Now this makes the most sense if we go back to our simplified network. So let's imagine that uh, James May has been coughing and spluttering all over 19th and 20th century scientific advancements and most of DREAM. And that's not very good because I heard there's a virus going around. So what we want to do is we want to tell James to be a bit more responsible, but we've only got one handkerchief and we need to make sure that we can get it to James. Now if we pick one of the boys in this network at random, we've only got a one in four chance of getting to James. It's not very good odds at stopping our virus. But if we pick one of the boys at random, say the lovely Brian Cox here, and ask him to give the handkerchief to somebody that he's friends with, he's gonna give it to James. So would Charlie Darwin, and so would Bertie Einstein. If you give them the handkerchief and ask them to give it to a friend, all of them are gonna give it to James. Suddenly, if you use this strategy, you've got a three in four chance of finding James. And this is the technique for using popularity to find the hub. It works for uh, seasonal flu, um, sexually transmitted diseases, and tuberculosis. Now, who said math doesn't save lives? Now, if you want a little bit more maths from us, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you're already a subscriber, perhaps you'd like to follow us on Twitter at The Head Squeeze.